Well, good, good morning, Canvas. Can't hear you. Good morning, Canvas. Good morning. Hey, if you're watching online, give me a good morning, either on Facebook or on Instagram or email or text, and just say, hey, good morning. Hey, we are so grateful to be able to gather. Thank you, God, for this beautiful weather, for the birds that are singing, uh, that we can declare the glory of God together. Hey, as we gather this morning, uh, live as we gather in person, as we gather online, what are some things, friends, that you are celebrating? What are some things that you are thanking God for today? That we're coming back to church. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, and hey, as we're sharing in person, guys, online, go ahead and just put it in the chat. What are you thanking God for as we gather? It says in Scripture that we enter His gates with thanksgiving. We enter His courts with praise. We want to enter the presence of God with thanksgiving. What are we thanking God for today? Thank you, God, for the weather. Health. Prayer. That came from Felicity in the back corner. Felicity's dad had a, a very significant accident yesterday, and um, and we're praying for we're praying for Felicity's dad. We're praying for their family. What else? What else are we thanking God for today? Joy. 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 We're thanking God for joy. What else, guys? Friends. Friends. What else? What are we thanking God for? Come on. His love and mercy. For the love and the mercy of the Lord. What else? That he is an unchanging God. Amen. For family, for this faith family. Yesterday was such a beautiful day. One of our young couples, uh, Brooke and Joseph, got married at Finnerty Cove, and it was so beautiful. And, um, and their vows were incredible. It was a beautiful day. It was a testimony to the love of God and the love that he's put into both of them. So I thank God for them, and I thank God for an opportunity to be a part of that. Hey, let's, uh, let's pray together as we continue to, to worship. Father, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for your presence. God, we thank you that you are here, that you are meeting with us today, that you Father, will minister to each person according to their need. And if someone needs healing, God, maybe today would be the day that they would experience that healing physically, spiritually, emotionally, relationally. Father, if someone needs a clear purpose or clear vision or clear direction, then maybe this is something you'll give them today. If they need a sense of hope, maybe today's the day that they'll receive that from you. And God, for each person that rides a bike down the Galloping Goose today, for each person that walks through this piece of real estate, maybe they've never heard a worship song, maybe they've never heard a word from the Word of God. God, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would minister to every person, not just the 50 of us that are gathered out here, but the hundreds that will go by today. Yeah, in Jesus' name, we pray and we do all that we're going to do today. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Thank you that you're here with us. That you never leave us and never forsake us, Lord. Thank you for the cross of Calvary and the shed blood of Jesus today. Lord, may we never, ever lose that wonder of those eyes that look at us and say, You're forgiven. You're mine. I've paid the price. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There is a hill I share.
was crucified Yet as his life was taken So I was granted mine My wealth is in the cross There's nothing more I want Than just to know his love of my crowns means nothing to me now for I counted up the cross and all my wealth is in the cross all my wealth is in the cross I will not boast in Fire. My 
make me ready to do Thank you that we can come with humble hearts before you and ask you to do that, to refine us, to make us more like Jesus so that your love, joy, peace, patience, meekness, temperance, and self-control, Lord, reigns in us, that wisdom reigns in us. That, Lord, we carry about the glory of God within us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit in the new covenant. You desire to pour yourself in us and through us. Reign in us, Lord. Refine us. Do whatever you have to do. We trust you that in the good and in the bad, in the trials and in the victories, Lord, you are working your will. You are reigning in us, God. Darkness running out of an empty grave. 
Cause Jesus, you reign above it all. Yes, you reign above it all. You reign above it all. Over the universe and over every heart, there is no higher name than yes, Jesus. Jesus, you reign above it all. In Psalm chapter 97, verse 1, it says this. It says, the Lord reigns. I want you just to, <laughs> to receive those words, to hear those words, to maybe let those words just settle over you right now. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. I want to ask Anna just to sing that over us, that, that he reigns above it all. Whatever it is that's going on in your life right now, friends, the Lord reigns. Let's sing it out together. Well, I'm sorry. Let's not sing it out together. Anna and Dean, you guys sing it over us. And the rest of us, let's just change our posture. Maybe stand. Maybe Lift your hands. Maybe hold your hands out in front of you. Some shift in your posture and reflect on the reality that our God reigns. Because you reign above it all. You reign above it all. Over the universe and over every heart. There is no high. Father, we pray for your reign in our lives. We know you reign, but we pray for your reign in our lives. God, we pray for your reign at Canvas. We pray for your reign in Victoria. God, we pray for your reign on Vancouver Island in the lives of people. God, we know that you are the Lord, that you're the King, that you're the Messiah, that you're the Sovereign One, that you breathed and creation happened that you died, that you were buried, that you rose from the dead, that you conquered death and sin and hell. But God, we pray for your reign in our lives, that we would submit to your reign. Mm. God, we pray this in the name of Jesus. And all God's people at Luxton and wherever we're watching around the world said, amen, amen, amen. We pray for the reign of Jesus in our lives and we pray for the reign of Jesus in the lives of our family and in the lives of, of our friends. You know, about six weeks ago, friends, we started a, a series in, in the book of First Peter. And we said that, that Peter was written by a guy named, y'all help me out here, 
Peter. He, he was one of Jesus' 12 disciples. And, and he was writing to a church that was scattered, a church that was persecuted, a church that was suffering, a church that was facing all kinds of trials. And, and what's the central message that he had for a church that was struggling, for a church that was scattered, that a, a church that was facing all kinds of difficulty? The message was this. Hey, look to the Lord. In the midst of being scattered, in the midst of challenges, guys, look to the Lord. Uh, remember what Jesus has done in your life. Don't forget who you are in Christ. And guys, remember that uh, you're a foreigner and an alien, an exile in a strange land. That heaven is your home. That you're merely just passing through right now. That's the message of 1 Peter. And we pick up today in 1 Peter chapter 3, uh, verse 15 to 18. So if you have a Bible, um, pull it out, whether you're at Luxton or whether you're online. If you don't have a Bible and you want a Bible, um, we have a few up here. And I'd love for you to take one home as a gift from Canvas to you. If you don't have a Canvas Bible reading plan before you leave today, pick one up. Uh, if you're online, you can go to the website, canvaschurch.ca, and you can download a, a Bible reading plan from there. So... 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Are you ready? Are you ready? We're ready. Are you ready online? Yeah, we're ready online. Here we go. So uh, the birds are ready. Uh, amen? Yeah, so 1 Peter chapter 15. Here we go. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. In your hearts, honor Christ. Christ as Lord. In your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Uh, in your life, in your marriage, in your family, in your workplace, with your time, with your money, with all of your life, honor Christ as Lord. Set Christ apart as Lord in your life. What's it mean for Christ to be our Lord? Uh, not just our Savior, but our Lord. Uh, not just our friend, but our Lord. Uh, not just our Messiah, but our, our Lord. Uh, not just our deliverer or our rescuer, but our Lord. Like, what does it mean, guys, for Jesus to be our Lord? If he's our Lord, he's our, he's our master. He's our, our boss. He's the one that's in control of our life. He is our king. He's our God. He's the one we serve. He's the one that is guiding us and leading us. He's the one that, that we worship. And, and if I'm setting apart Christ as Lord in my life, he's the one that's governing my time. He's the one that's governing my wallet. He's the one that's governing my phone. He's the one that's governing my social media. He's the one governing what I'm looking at with my eyes and what I'm not looking at with my eyes. He's the one that's governing what comes out of this mouth, what these ears hear, what these eyes see. You see, for many of us, we would all agree that Jesus is our Savior, our Rescuer, our Deliverer. Our hero. But is he our Lord? Is he the one that we have submitted all of our lives to? Now, Peter's telling the church it's scattered throughout modern day Turkey. He, he's saying 2,000 years ago, he's saying, hey guys, in your heart, in your life, go ahead and set apart Christ as your, as your Lord, as your master, as your king, as your, as your boss is the one that is guiding all of your life. And then he says this. He says, always be prepared to give an answer to some people. No, he says, always be prepared to give an answer to the people that you're friends with. No, he says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone. Go, let's go ahead and say that together. Everyone, everyone. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Not sometimes, guys, but always be prepared. Be ready all the time. Seven years ago, in September 2014, 
Ecoasis in the Western Bear Mountain reached out to Canvas Church, which was a new church that wasn't even meeting every week as a church yet. We were only meeting once a month. And they reached out to us and they said, hey, there's a crisis in our community. The crisis is there's a BC teacher strike. Kids don't have anything to do during the week. Parents have to go to work. Would you partner with us to do a series of kids camps during the teacher strike? And this was on like a Tuesday when we're having this conversation and the camps would start on like a Monday. And we usually take six to 12 months to plan a camp as a church. We have less than a week to pull this thing off. Um, but through a series of circumstances and meetings and prayer, uh, we felt that God was inviting us to step into a, a miracle, into an amazing opportunity. And, and there was one church in particular that we reached out to from Louisiana that we asked them if they would send people to come and help us pull off this wellness camp. At the time, Canvas only had about 20 people, maybe 25 people that were a part of the church. A lot of those people that could take off of work decided that they would take off of work and that they would help with the camp. But we still needed more help. And there was this church in Louisiana that we called on like a Thursday. And on Friday and Saturday, they started having people show up in Victoria. Now, we're calling on Thursday, and within a day or two days, they have people in their church that are dentists, that are doctors, that are teachers, that are businessmen and businesswomen showing up to help us do a wellness camp. And I said, how in the world were you guys able to respond so quickly to this opportunity? How did we call you and within 24 hours you show up here? Or within 40 hours, you, how did you show up here? How did this happen? And here's what they all said, one at a time. They said, you know, our pastor, Pastor Steve, he said, you know, when Jesus said, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, um, if we're going to make disciples of all nations, Pastor Ashley, we need a passport. We need to be ready. We need to be ready for the opportunity that God gives us. So Pastor Steve told all of us, if we're going to make disciples of all nations, we all need a passport so that we could be ready right away. And Pastor Steve told all of us, we needed to save a couple thousand dollars each so that we would be ready for the opportunity that God presented. So when you called us and you said, would you come and be a part of this miraculous opportunity, we were able to say yes because we were prepared. We were ready. We had a passport. We had a couple thousand dollars. We saw God was in it. And we stepped into this opportunity. Peter's saying, set apart Christ as Lord, friends. And always be prepared. Always be ready for the opportunities that God gives you. The opportunity could be as small as offering a word of blessing to a gas station attendant. It could be speaking a word of blessing to a grocery store clerk. It could be speaking a blessing to the person that is slicing your deli meat. Or it could be in the future God inviting you to join him in something somewhere else in the world. It could be small, it could be big, but we want to be prepared. We want to be ready for the opportunities that God gives us. And we want to be ready to share about the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. You know, let's say tomorrow comes. Tomorrow is probably going to come, all right? So I know you're a little nervous about that maybe, but tomorrow is probably going to come. And when tomorrow comes, when somebody asks you, how in the world do you have hope? How in the world do you have joy? How in the world do you have peace in the midst of 15 months of crazy in the midst of COVID-19? How would you respond to that? Those of you that are married and have, have, have a, a marriage relationship where the husband is loving the wife and the wife is honoring and respecting the husband and somebody comes to you and says, I don't get it. Marriages don't work. Marriages are falling apart. Marriages are struggling. How do you guys have this love? How do you all have this honor? How do you guys have this respect? Uh, you know, you're, you, you, you never talk negative about your wife. You negative, negative, ne never talk negative about your husband. Like, like what's the deal? 
and there's a hope that's in you, and you're ready to give an answer for the hope that you have in Christ. Or let me ask you the question, let me ask the question this way, or phrase it this way, do you have that kind of hope? Do you have that kind of hope in your life? You, do you have the, the hope of glory that Paul talks about when he's writing to the church in Colossae and Colossians chapter 1? Do you have a rock solid hope in Christ? Look what he says next. He says, but, but do it, friends, with gentleness and rudeness. No, no, he doesn't say that. He says, do it with gentleness and arrogance. No, he doesn't say that. No, he says, do it with gentleness and what? Do it with gentleness and respect. Do it with gentleness and respect. You know what gentleness is? It's meekness. It is strength under control. Respect is showing, it's showing honor. It's showing value. Uh, when you share about the hope that is in you, do you do it pridefully? Do you do it arrogantly? Or do you do it with a spirit of gentleness? Do you do it with a spirit of honor? Do you do it with a spirit of respect? Or I could put it this way. Let's say tomorrow happens and you have an opportunity to share about the hope that you have in Christ. And you start talking to the person. Would the person be able to say, I feel so honored by the way that you're sharing this. I feel so cared for. I feel, I feel so valued. I don't understand your message yet. I don't get it, but I feel cared for by you. I feel respected. I feel honored by you. I feel that you value me. So when we communicate about Jesus, about this hope that we have, we want to do it with gentleness, with meekness, with honor, with respect. We want the people to know that we, we care about them, that we, we're sharing. Why? Because we... Because we love them. Because they're, because they're important to us. You know, some of you know my story. My, my stepfather, who really was a father to me, um, he became a father when I was uh, 11 years old. He was from Cairo, Egypt. And he was a, uh, a, practicing, a practicing Muslim. He and my mom married, I think, like in 1988. He died in 2007. As a matter of fact, it was a week ago in 2007 that he passed away. And um, he and I would often have conversations about Islam and Christianity. And, and so often I would have an opportunity to talk about the hope that I had in Christ. But he knew that I loved him. He knew that I cared about him. And, and it was with a spirit of gentleness. It was with a spirit of meekness. It was with a spirit of respect. And it's so important, guys, that when we share about the hope that we have, uh, that we do it with a spirit of gentleness, that we do it with a spirit of love. Look at what Peter says next. He says, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. And look at verse 18. For Christ also suffered, or some translations say Christ also died once for sins. For Christ also died once for sins. Let's just go ahead and say this word once. So one, two, three, once. So go ahead and put that in the chat. Once. How many times did Christ die? Once. How many times uh, was he buried? Once. How many times did Christ rise from the dead? Once. He only had to do it one time. Why? Because his sacrifice was sufficient to cover your sin, to cover my sin, to cover your unrighteousness, to cover my unrighteousness. You see, up until that point in Israel, every single year, they had a day set aside, the Day of Atonement, where millions of unblemished animals were slaughtered. And all of a sudden, they go from having to do all this work to try to earn God's favor. 
Uh, they, they went from having to slaughter animals to find the unblemished animals to all this religious practice to all of a sudden they went from that to there was a once and for all sacrifice that all of a sudden was sufficient to cover your sin and my sin so that you and I wouldn't have a spiritual death but so that you and I would experience spiritual life that was so hard for the people to comprehend that 2,000 years ago could you imagine being a 65 or 70 year old and for 65 or 70 years every year on the day of atonement your dad or your mom or your family, they go and they get the lamb. And they slaughter it. And there's blood that's shed for all the mistakes you made in the previous year. All this striving, all this working, all this trying to achieve, all this trying to figure out, is God still mad at me? Is he not mad at me anymore? Is he pleased with me? Is he proud of me? Is he not proud of me? Like, how does God really feel about me? All that to all of a sudden, a once and for all sacrifice was made. And here we are 2,000 years later. And it's still a once and for all sacrifice. The Greek word for once and for all is the word hapax, meaning of perpetual validity, not requiring repetition. Guys, it was one crucifixion, it was one resurrection by Jesus, and that was sufficient. The author of Hebrews says it this way in Hebrews 9, 26, but as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. In Hebrews chapter 4, the author of Hebrews says, hey, let us approach the throne of grace with what? With fear, with being afraid, with being worried, with being concerned? No. Now, the author of Hebrews says, because of Jesus, because he's your high priest, you can approach the throne of grace with what? With confidence. Knowing that you're going to find grace and mercy to help you in your time of need. Look at what he says next. He says, uh, the righteous for the unrighteous. Now, I've been thinking about that phrase all week. The righteous for the unrighteous. Jesus was the righteous. You and I were the unrighteous. Jesus was righteous in every way. He was perfect. He was sinless. But you and I, not so much. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 21 says it this way, that God sent him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You see, Jesus was sinless in every way, but he took on your sin and he took on my sin. Uh, look at what it says in the last part of verse 18. It says, to bring you to God. Uh, he was put to death in the body, but he was made alive in the spirit. Guys, we, I wish I could just get so close to every one of you here. And I wish I could get so close to all of you watching online right now. Man, I'd, and just pull up a chair right next to you. And that's coming one day. Um, but, 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 but Jesus made a way because you and I needed a way back to God. Your relationship with God was, was broken. Uh, your relationship with God was shattered. Uh, you were rebellious in every way. I was rebellious in every way. We were far off from God. We were separate from God. Uh, Kenneth Weiss said it this way. He said, Jesus, by dying on the cross and paying for our sins, satisfied the just penalty of the broken law which we incurred by our disobedience and removed for us that which barred our access to God. The divine tyran of the temple veil in Matthew chapter 27 verse 51 demonstrated the reality that Jesus opened a way for us to be back to God. No more going into the Holy of Holies on the most holy day of the year by the most holy, most high priest with bells around his waist. So in case he had sinned, they could pull him out because he died in the presence of a holy God. No more of that. This temple veil, which was bigger than this back wall, like it was massive. It was torn. 
It was torn when Jesus died on the cross, symbolizing that there's a new way, that there's a way made for you and I to come back to God. We needed that because Romans chapter 3 says that we've all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Our fellowship with God, friends, had been shattered because of our sin. The wages of sin was what? It was death. But praise be to God that even though we deserve death, the gift of God was what? It was eternal life through Jesus Christ. So I'm going to have to uh, offer Junior this pen as a gift. If I offer him this gift, pen as a gift. And I said, Junior, I, I want to give you this pen as a gift. I, I love you, man, and I, I'm so proud of you. I want you to have this pen as a gift. And I just set this pen on the floor right here on the stage. And Junior leaves without taking that gift home. It was a gift that was made available to him that he didn't receive. And for so many of us, Maybe not so many of us right here, but so many of us in our city, so many of us in our community, so many of us in our nation. There's been a gift that's been made available, and the gift is Jesus. And so many have turned their back on him. So many are missing out on this hope, on this joy, on this life on this love, on this contentment. So many are missing out because there's a gift that's been made available, but they're still far off because they haven't responded to Jesus. Romans says it this way in Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates, he puts on display his love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, friends, Christ died for you. He, Jesus, sacrificed for you. He came after you. He died for you. He came to bring you back to fellowship with God. Not so that you can know about God, but so that you can know God. Not so that you can practice religion and try to do all these things to earn the favor of God. No, he came so that you could know him. So that you could know God. Like to, to really know him. Not to know about him from a distance. But that you could really know him. And get this. That he could really know you. And in knowing you. You wouldn't have any fear of rejection. It's the word intimacy. The word intimacy is to know someone fully. And to be fully known by them. Without any fear of rejection. Jesus came so that we could have that kind of relationship with God. So that you could know the hope of glory which is Christ in you. So that you could experience peace beyond understanding. So that you and I could have an unexpressible joy from heaven. Uh, Two questions kind of as we bring this thing to a conclusion. And as we prepare to share communion together as as a faith family. Here's the first question that I have for you. And, and really I have it for myself as well. Is Jesus, is he really Lord of my life? Yeah, he's my savior. Yes, he's my rescuer and my deliverer. He's my God, he's my friend. But is he Lord? Is he boss? Does he govern my calendar? Does he govern my purchases? Does he govern my day? Does he govern the way I treat my wife? Does he govern the way I treat my kids? Does he govern um, all of my interactions? Is Jesus my Lord? Do I set him apart as Lord in my heart? And do you? Is Jesus your Lord? Is he your king? Is he your master? Is he the one that is guiding every one of your steps? The righteous died for the unrighteous. And here's the second question. Would you, this includes you teenagers that are here, praise God that there's teenagers and kids in the house. Um, Would you, would you be willing to ask God To get you ready for the opportunities that he has for you. 
there are opportunities that God has for you this week. Because you're watching today, I believe God's using today to prepare you for this week. I believe there are opportunities, like hear me guys, like there are opportunities for you this week. You are going to run into somebody that is going to ask you about your faith in Jesus this week. It's going to happen. Are you ready to be a blessing to someone else's life? Are you ready to share about the hope that you have in Christ? Are you prepared? Do do you have a sense of readiness, a sense of anticipation? I promise you, you will have an opportunity probably today, definitely this week, to speak about the hope that is in you, the hope of glory. And you know, when we step into those opportunities, it leads to a great blessing for us. When you and I step into those opportunities, God does something in us just as much as he does something in the other person. Let's pray together. Father, we're grateful for your word. God, we're grateful for your presence. God, we're grateful for this outdoor sanctuary. God, we're grateful for the birds that are chirping and the nests that are being laid just right above us. And it reminds us because you say in Matthew chapter 6, if you're going to take care of the birds, how much more will you take care of us? And we don't need to worry about tomorrow, but we need to seek first your kingdom and your righteous, knowing that everything else will be added unto that. So God, we want to, um, to lay our lives before your lordship today. And just say, Jesus, you are Lord. And God, we want to be ready for the opportunities that you give us. And that we can share the hope that we have in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We want to, I want to invite Dean and Anna to come back up. And does everybody here have a communion packet? If you don't, just wave your hand in the air and maybe Carla will get you, get you one. Carla, would you be willing to, to grab some communion packets for some of these? If you don't, no, keep waving your hand, like keep waving it. If you don't have one and if you're online, grab a, grab a cracker, grab a piece of bread, grab some juice. We're going to give you a second to do that. You know, communion, guys, is a, it's an opportunity for us to remember Jesus. It's an opportunity for us to remember what Peter just said in in, in verse 18 when he said that the righteous died for the unrighteous. And, And when you and I take communion, it's a reminder that the body of Jesus was broken for you. That like his body was ripped apart for you. He was betrayed for you. He was despised for you. He was mocked for you. He was spit upon for you. The crown of thorns that ended up on his head, it was for you. And and when we share communion together as a faith family, we're remembering Jesus. We're remembering his sacrifice. We're remembering his death. We're remembering what he went through. Uh, This is not just a religious practice. No, this this is a holy moment. Uh, this isn't something we're, we do because we want some little piece of cracker or some little piece of juice. No, we, we do this remembering Jesus. Remembering that the righteous died for the unrighteous. Uh, remembering that he took this on for you so that you and I could be brought back to God. So that your future would be heaven. That your future wouldn't be hell. That your future wouldn't be eternal separation from God. But your future would be life, that it would be abundance, that it would be fullness, that it would be joy. So as we share communion this morning, we remember that the righteous died for the unrighteous. And because the righteous died for the unrighteous, the unrighteous became righteous. So as a Christian, you don't leave here with any sense of, I'm unrighteous. No, you leave here with a sense of righteousness. Because it's the righteousness of Christ that you're clothed in, friends. You don't leave here with a sense of shame. You don't leave here with a sense of what if, why not, what, what, what could I do different? No, you leave here with a sense of 
Jesus, the righteousness of God, died so that I could be made righteous even though I didn't deserve it. So if you'd peel back the top layer and we hold the bread up together at Luxton and wherever you are, hold it up and we remember Jesus. I say that on that night before Jesus went to the cross, he took the bread and he broke it and he told his disciples, he says, this is my body broken for you. You take this in remembrance of me. So we take and eat remembering Jesus. And we peel back the cup and Jesus would, was gathered with those men that had walked with him for a few years and he said, this cup, it represents my blood of the new covenant. My blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. So we hold it up and we remember that the blood of Jesus was shed so your sin could be forgiven so that you could go from being unrighteous to being righteous. From being broken to being made whole. So we take and drink remembering the blood of Jesus that was shed. Jesus, we want to say thank you. We want to say thank you for what you've done in our life. You are our Lord. God, give us opportunities this week to speak about the hope that we have in Christ. Father, we pray for the city of Victoria to taste and see that the Lord is good. And God, we pray that you would use us that you would use other believers, that you would use Canvas, that you would use other Christian churches in our city to speak of the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As Dean and as Anna sing over us, I'm going to be over there to your right. You might need prayer today. And it would be a joy for me to be able to pray with you and to be able to pray for you. So if you need prayer as... These guys sing over us. Just head over to your right, and I'd love to be able to pray for you. Um, we're going to sing a song called No One Ever Cared for Me Like Jesus. And I don't know if we've ever sung it um, with you guys before, but it's basically just a song about, um, I mean, my testimony, and I'm sure your testimony as well. Um, before moving here, just a quick story. I was working at a coffee shop, and we had this regular that would come in every morning right when we opened at 7. And um, I'd always say, good morning, how are you doing? And working in the early mornings is exhausting. And one day he came in, and he said, Anna, I have a question for you. And I said, what's that? He said, how are you so radiant and full of joy every single morning? And I was like, whoa. Like, I think I'm kind of grumpy in the mornings. Like... <laughs> And um, it's not me, guys. It was Jesus. But I looked at him and I said, do you really want to know? And he's like, yeah, I do. And I said, Jesus. And he was like, that's it? I was like, yep. And he walked away and I could see the look on his face just like pondering it. And um, it makes me emotional because it's like in that moment, like literally the only answer that I have is Jesus. Like I could go on and tell story and story after story. But the reality is it's just because of the person of Jesus and how much he loves me, how much he's cared for me and my family that he's made a way and been faithful. And uh, I was just reminded of that this morning, and it was such a beautiful moment because there was literally nothing else that came to my head. It's just him. It's just Jesus. And so um, we're going to sing this song, and um, I invite you just to take a look back on your life and just recall, bring to memory all those moments that he's been faithful. If my heart could tell a story If my life could sing a song If I have a testimony If I have anything at all No one ever cared for me like Jesus. 
His faithful hands held me all this way. When I'm old and gray and all my days are numbered on the earth, let it be known in you alone my joy. children tell their children mm, let this be their memory that all my treasure was in heaven you were everything No one ever cared for me like Jesus. His faithful hand has held me all this way. And when I'm old and gray and all my days are numbered on the earth, let it be known in you alone, my joy.
Lord, we thank you that indeed you are not only the source of our joy, but you're the one who will keep us in that place of joy. We confess our absolute need of you this morning, that all of our accomplishments, all of our wealth really means nothing compared to the preciousness of knowing you. All of our dreams and all of our plans, Lord, we hold them loosely in our hands and we count them loss for the sake of knowing you. Thank you, Father God. Amen. Amen. We're going to invite James to uh, to share a little bit about uh, what he has this morning. And uh, thank you, James, for coming and sharing your gift with us. Is this on? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dean. And um, yeah, I don't even... Don't even want to say anything after that song. It's just so amazing to hear that from Dean and Anna. It was so beautiful. And um, just, I'm allowing the grace of Jesus just to wash over me right now. With this painting, though, I just wanted to, to show somebody who had the cross close to their heart who is reaching out to other people, was allowing those divine opportunities to make the most of them. That's what I hope for myself too and and for all of us. And I don't know, for some reason, this picture, as it went along, it just, it felt kind of like Mother Teresa maybe when she was younger. And she has her hands out to those, the least of these. And, um... And the, the power of the Holy Spirit is in her. And the cross is close to her heart. Mm-hmm. And like Jesus said, those rivers of living water will flow from, from your belly. So. Yeah. Thank you, James. Yeah, go ahead. I'm just so thankful for all the gifts that Jesus gives us. Some of us can paint. Some of us can sing and play music. Some of us have great gifts of hospitality. Think of this wonderful couple right in front of me here. Mm -hmm. Some of you have gifts of administration. Some of you can teach. We all just make up the body of Christ. And one of the beauties of, of, of COVID, if there's any beauty to be taken out of it, is that hopefully once again we'll discover those gifts. And begin to operate as the body of Christ in its totality, whether it's in groups of 10 or two or three or in groups of two or 300. It's my prayer. Tara has some wonderful announcements for us, which she's so gifted at. (laughs) Thank you, Dean. Good morning. Good morning, everyone on the live stream. Good morning, all of you here. It's, again, so great to see you guys. So great to see some new faces that we haven't seen yet. Um, so your announcements this morning, I feel, James, I echo what you said after that song. Um, you really just feel like there's not much that you really want to say. Um, but one of, one of the things that Anna sang in that song is, um, is no, one's, no one's ever loved me like Jesus. And he is faithful and he has held me all this way. And one of Ashley's response questions on the app is, what does it look like for us to set apart Christ as Lord in our lives? And I feel like that's a good response question to the song that Anna just sang for us. Um, What does that look like for us to set apart Christ as Lord over our lives, over every single aspect of our lives? That's one of the questions that Ashley has on the Canvas Church Victoria app for you this morning. Um, Some announcements for our youth. We have no youth this Wednesday, the 26th. We will meet again here at Luxton on Wednesday, June 2nd. Um, So no youth this coming Wednesday. And uh, we thank you again, you guys, so much for your for your generosity. We thank you for just continuing to partner with us as we are running camps. As I know, um, Ashley's excited. The volleyball nets are back up again. So just keep your eye on the e-news as um, for youth. Our locations will start to shift over the summer. 
summer. Young adults are looking at bringing some more things back up again. Very exciting stuff as the weather changes for us. And uh, we have our offering box back for you live this morning. So there's envelopes there. If you need prayer, you're welcome to put them on the envelopes. Always be prepared. <laughs> you know, you always, you always need to be prepared. Uh, I'm going to let Tara come back up here and continue to talk about the offering, and then I'm going to share one more thing, and then we're going to be done. Go ahead, Tara. Thanks, Ashley. Good laugh. Good laugh. <laughs> so, yes, guys, we have envelopes. Please feel free to come on up. Um, if you need prayer, you're welcome to fill them out on the envelopes. You're always welcome to email anybody on staff or ashley at canvaschurch.ca for prayer. And uh, we do. We thank you again for everything that you do. Thank you for your coming. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your love, your encouragement on the live stream. Have a wonderful week. We love you all. God bless. Yeah, so before you leave, I just want to say I, I really believe, I know I've said this before, but I believe a shift is coming. And um, I'm looking forward to this summer. Like, I'm not like, oh, man, it's summer. Oh, man, we still have restrictions. No, I'm excited about the summer of 2021. And I want us to lean in, and I want us to believe that God's going to give us opportunities this summer. Okay, let's not go into this summer with a lack of faith and with a sense of discouragement or like, oh, no, what are we going to do? No, let's go into this summer with a sense of anticipation, a sense of excitement, looking to go life on life with people. There's something that God's stirring in my heart that I'm going to tell you guys about in a few weeks, but I don't want to tell you about it yet. Um, but there's something that's stirring here. I, I'm excited, and I'm looking forward to it. So, God, we just say thank you for summer. Thank you for what you have planned for this summer. Thank you for our friends that are here at Luxton and our friends that are watching online. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Have an amazing day. We love you. God bless you.